Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, and welcome to a Strixhaven best of one draft on MTG Arena with your host, Travis Simulan Sowers. I have definitively figured out the format. I know the way to do it, and I'm going to show you, although I'm going to look a little crazy while we're going for a minute. And I'm not going to tell you what the strategy is yet. I'm going to make you watch and figure it out. We're taking Demonic Tutor here. That one's pretty easy. That is not the way, but you will see the way. You will see the way. I think we're taking Divide by Zero here. Okay, I have to tell you the strategy or it's going to be a really boring draft where you just watch me click cards and don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing. My new theory is that this format is so dependent on rares and uncommons that we need to just be picking the best card from every pack almost until the middle of pack two before we actually decide what we're doing. So I don't care what we have over here. I don't care what plays with what. I just don't care. I want the best card out of every pack. And eventually... When we start seeing a really good card late, then we go, hey, wait a minute, I guess we'll play that. So I think you could, argue, like, I'm trying to decide, what, like, I underestimated regrowth in the last draft. I really did. I'm trying to decide whether divide by zero or regrowth are better. I think divide by zero is on its own. The reason I'm thinking that I might want it the other way is because it could play with black green, and I got to let that go. We're going to be open here, and I think this is what open looks like. So what is the best card here? Like, irrelevant of ev literally everything else. I don't think it's Weather the Storm. Like, that's like a bad revitalize in most of the decks that would play it. Is it Prismari Apprentice or is it Pop Quiz? I'm not taking a field trip here. There's good uncommons here. And I don't care if it goes with anything that we're doing. We're just like, what's the best card in this pack? I think it's between these two. I think Field Trip is probably third, although the Drake is pretty close behind it too. I'm going to try the Apprentice. Uh, the Squirrel Colony is not bad either. All right, here, I think it's a debate between which of these two are better. No, I don't think it is. I think Killian's just great. And we still have no idea what we're playing. We're just trying to say what is the best card in each of these packs. I don't have any cards over here. Just Killian. That's all we got. Now, what is the best card in this pack? Again, don't care what we have. I think it might be Masterpiece. Which is interesting because basically what we're doing is drafting two decks. It's certainly not past summoning. I think it might be Masterpiece. All right, what is our best card here? Is it Piggy Storm or Lash of Malice? I think it's Storm, but Lash is really close. I kind of want to continue just drafting both decks and not commit to either one yet. And that's what I'm going to do. We're drafting a Prismari deck and a Silver Quill deck, and we'll eventually see which one is open. Now, what's the best card here? Is it Blood Researcher? Because it might be. I think it is. I think it's the researcher. This is pick seven. And the whole point of this was we're going to stay open. We're just taking the best card out of the first pack. And we're not committing to anything yet. All right, so Arcane Subtraction is pretty freaking good. 
Necrotic fumes in the sideboard is pretty freaking good. I would, I, if we had to first pick one of these cards, I'd take the subtraction. And that's basically what I'm doing, is just evaluating all of these as if it's a first pick. We've got 10 the pass, which can go in some Witherbloom decks, but I think the best card here is the Tome Shredder. Interestingly, we could play it in Lorehold if that turns, turns out to be open, or we could play it in a Prismari deck. This looks insane to me, but we'll figure this out. I don't think any of these are must plays, whereas Campus Guide at least fits into a couple different decks. All right, Drake is probably the best card out of this pack, but there's no indication that blue green is open. Doesn't matter, we're picking the best card out of every pack. Biblioplex Assistant is probably the best card there. I don't think this actually matters. I guess a decent lore hold deck could probably play Discovery. And I don't think either of these two matter that much. But sure. There's pack one. We have no idea what color we're in. Which means we can try to draft what's actually open now. And I think the Phoenix is the best card in this pack. We've got enough cards that we could take it and get into Prismari, or we could take it and get into Lorehold. I think the Phoenix is better than Barry and Books. We're also likely to see another Barry and Books if we get into Blue. No, I don't think you're entirely crazy to be tempted by Rise, but we're, we've got a, a good rare and then some good commons. If we see the good commons getting passed, we can be like, oh, okay, we'll go here. So what's the best card here? I do like expressive iteration. Like, we could look at this as our spot to be like, okay, maybe we're going to flirt some with Prismari. Mage Hunter's Onslaught's pretty good. Mage Duel's pretty good. I think Onslaught, Duel, and Iteration are kind of the cards we should be thinking about. I don't think I would be taking uh, Elemental Summoning this early. It's a thing, but if you're picking the... Le I don't need Lessons. I need Learn cards. If Lessons wheel, cool. If they don't, I'll live with it. I think the best card here is the Mage Hunter's Onslaught. I'm not committing to crap, not till I know what's open. I still don't know what's open, but I know that Rise of Exodus is pretty good. There's going to be a second where we're like, oh my god, I know what's open, and start frantically moving these cards around to build a deck, but we're not, we're not there yet. Is this the moment? Because we could take Zimone and go for Quandrix stuff. We could take Silver Quill Apprentice and go for Silver Quill stuff. We could take Arcane Subtraction and kind of flirt with Blue Red. If we're thinking about a Blue Red strategy, does this not leave us the most open now? Because I think it does. Okay, I think I'm ready to say now we are playing either Silver Quill or... What are we supposed to do here? Two Killians is absurd. We're not playing this Blood Researcher. 
We're probably not playing this Drake. I, I feel like we just take the Killians and this is what we're doing now. And, and again, unless I get moved. I don't feel moved here, although there is another Elemental Masterpiece. But how are we ramping to it? I think this is actually what we're doing. It looks short on playables to me. This deck usually wants to win in the air, so something like the Spectre could be quite good. Crack. Crack. This isn't working either. Okay, so the next video is going to be a Super Animal Royale video, which is a very different kind of game. But I suspect that you guys and gals on YouTube will enjoy it quite a bit, because I can't play Magic anymore. Okay, there's our first learn spell. Praise Banan. We'd have been happy with Negate here. Curate came back, which is functionally the same card as... Uh, the Prismari one. Yeah, I think this is better currently. We could look at Enthusiastic Study. Bless you! Which is an expensive combat trick, but a combat trick nonetheless. It would be quite good on some of our cards, and I've already got one of these. Spun Snow Day? Okay. There's a deck developing here. Does it want strategic planning more than the other Masterpiece? It might not. We could play that too if we need to. And we could play that too if we need to. So. Is the Silver Quill deck better now? Because we can't cast that in this. I think we're supposed to take the Spectacle Mage. This has been incredibly difficult for me. Well, no, I don't take the Spectacle Mage. I take the Onyx. I take the Onyx. Because I'll see another Spectacle Mage if that's actually open. And if it's not, I can live with it. Like, we could have Liliana and confront the past. We could also just take this Frost Trickster and win. Treasure City Liliana is not our game plan. I think I want to take the Trickster and win. We're not playing the Liliana. All right, Prismari Pledge Mage may be what we're looking for here. I appreciate the environmental sciences too. I, I could pretty comfortably take that because I could get it with divide by zero potentially, get it with, um, I mean, Campus Guide could enable that too. I think I could be happy with the sciences here. Because the chances are this deck is going to want to make a lot of land drops anyway. 
You guys are still excited about the Liliana. Don't be excited about the Liliana. I don't think we're playing the Liliana. I think we're just playing a Prismari deck. And I think we're pretty happy about it. Practical research could do some work here. I don't really have enough learn cards that I need to value that highly. I think the Prismari Pledge Mage may be just what I want. I think we found us a deck, and that wasn't the Spectacle Mage we gave up, but I'm certainly happy to have it. We could take another Masterpiece, or we could take a Pillar Drop Warden. I don't know what I'm getting back that's that important. I think I'd rather just do this and see if that... Well, the other one's not going to wheel, but that's okay. Because I could just play this and 18 lands. Pillar does stonewall everything and keep us alive. I don't think I want to stonewall everything and keep us alive. I think I want to attack them and use uh, Practical Research, Curate, and the Dust Speaker to burn through the deck. I don't need to be alive. I need to kill our opponents. I don't think I actually want any of this. I could sort of see playing two enthusiastic studies, but we'll see. I like this guy a lot more than the Befuddler. This has been an experience. Let me tell you what. This has been quite the experience. Do I just want to play this? Because I might. I'm still not sure what was actually open there. It has been absolutely impossible for me to tell. I think I'm, I'm, I'm like okay adjacent with this. It's like all early game and all late game. And if I have to discard these, I have to discard them. It's fine. We can make treasure to cast the next one. I think this is our deck. Man, just looking at Demonic Tutor and Professor Onyx in the sideboard makes me feel like I had to have done something wrong. I either just broke this format or I will never understand it. They were first picks. They were first butts. Butt spot knows what's up. Why are we not splashing for demonic tutor? Okay. <laughs> Think that through a little bit. I think you'll get there. It would be basically splashing for a second copy of the best card that's left in my deck. And I don't think I have the fixing to enable it. We've only got two learn cards. And what would we get with it? This deck is pretty redundant. Man... Okay, so worst case scenario, I'm discarding that. I can do that. I don't want to do that, but we could do that. Because I still don't think you're supposed to send back two landers. I'm also not convinced that like turn three Pledge Mage is, is going to win most games out of nowhere, but hitting a red source here would be a pretty big deal. God, that makes me want to keep it and see if we can just hit the red. But I'm going to be a grown-up and discard it.
I don't have to go back and look at them to know that I missed a pivotal point. You can kind of tell. At least I can kind of tell. So if I play this Phoenix, I can get environmental sciences. And trade it off for the 2-1. Yeah, I think that's actually my line. Because we need to have mana right now. Like with any luck, we hit a land drop and we can play Pledge Mage and then get the red lighter. I played Jumpstart on Arena and it was fun. An unusual attack. Okay, it's not an unusual attack if you've got a combat trig. Well, I could tell in our last draft we were supposed to switch to Prismari relatively early, or relatively early in the in pack two, and didn't and just got wrecked for it. So here we're going to have to Sciences into Curate and then try to trade off the Pledge Mage. But they're almost out of cards, so like if we can survive for just a few more turns, we may be able to stabilize, but we're hemorrhaging quite a bit. Great's instant, right? Yeah. Good God. Okay. Never mind. Don't think there's actually an out for us here. Sadness. I don't think that's a like hammer meat nail of the deck. Like we drew we kept a two lander and never drew lands. I have not had a nut draw since Ikoria. That strategy of drafting, I do feel like, built me a better deck than what I've had recently. Yeah, the answer can't be just draw well, right? Because if it is, this game sucks and I don't want to play it. That can't be the answer. Just get lucky! All right, Telemar with the kills, Ethan with the assists. Rewards for Dave, Techno Shaman, and Cyril. All right, let's go kill some monsters. I want to try this again because I don't think the deck is bad. I can see this deck getting wins. Okay, we can talk. I don't see the point in a best of three break, Jank. Uh, a lot of people have suggested that, and I've thought about it too, and it's not a bad idea. But like, if the goal is to eventually reach number one in Mythic, which it is, it's almost like your goal is competitive chess and taking a break to go jump rope. That could help you with a mental reset, 
but it's not going to help you solve the issue, right? I think there's a difference in the reward that you might receive for drafting what's open in a pod versus here, right? Yeah, it would be for a mental reset. And sometimes a mental reset can help solve an issue. I hear you guys. You're not wrong. I don't think that's what I need right now. It could be. Yeah, I can feel bad about my reflexes instead of my brain. Sure. My intent is to get eight wins with this draft, which you may think is impossible it only goes to seven. It's a super fun battle royale game. I've streamed it a bunch. Not in a long time. I mean, I don't think it helps the situation, Night Gamer. The goal is to get good at best of one. If I'm not good at best of one, doing anything that's not that doesn't seem like it's like hitting that goal. Oh, you'll certainly need some luck to get there. And I, I am paying attention to what other people are saying is good. I'm not ignoring them. Gotta trade that off, don't we? Yeah, I think we do. I don't need to scry with this. I can scry with that. Oh, the chin's not down. We're fine. Is rank limited change between formats periodically? The only rank limited that is available, Canon, is uh, best of one draft. There is no rank for anything else. What's up, Java? Thank you very much. Yeah, like I said, like watching drafts from other people who are good that I've beat doesn't really appeal to me. Like getting a tier list of card rankings doesn't really appeal to me. Tell me what you got. Okay. 
As long as it ain't the Hexproof spell, we're good to go. I hear you, Miso. I hear you. And I'm not saying that there's people out there that couldn't tell me a thing or two about draft. There certainly are. I'm saying that's not how I learn. It's awkward for him if I just hit him with a 3-3 haste. Hell, how awkward was it? is it if I play the 3-3 haste and swing team? Probably not as awkward as if I do it next turn. I do remember the deck. It was the one I won a sweatsuit invitational with. If I play this in attack, what happens? They probably eat the frost trickster, chump this, go to four. I don't think I like that. I think I like going for it next turn. Because they're likely to just play the Combat Professor and hit me, which I'm fine with. Yeah, the Tome Shredder being bigger is better too. Seems really weird to me, but okay. So the 4 4s already have good attacks. I could just send those and do it again. If I play the Ogre and swing team, what happens? This gets chomped, this gets chomped, this gets eaten, this gets eaten, they go to five. Yeah, we're just still better off just doing it again. You didn't miss it. This deck was both of them, Miklas. I have a pretty good Silver Quill deck in my sideboard. I may not need to swing with all of the stuff. Time to see if they're stream sniping me. I mean, that's the other possible answer, is that I'm playing a more competitive format and people are watching. Alright, so what happens if I just send this and the four fours? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think sending the things that can't trade is actually doing me any good. I think sending everything else is. I think that's my attack too. 
Oh, I forgot to reset up Cardboard Live. I can fix that in a minute. I just forgot to restart it. There, should be up now if you refresh. I feel like killing the Tome Shredder has to be better than the fro the the other thing, but what do I know? I like this block though. It's a great block. I would encourage them to do the same block again. Combat Professor is better than living? Potentially, Knight. Potentially. Sometimes it's hard to tell which creatures are actually getting through. They did not have mana. They did have cards. It's possible I was supposed to send all there. When the boards get that that big, I have some trouble kind of thinking about exactly what they could do. Y you could very well be right. All right, this has some potential. Is less good, but that's okay. I could sort of believe that. They certainly can. And that, that's likely a part of it, too. Like, I tend to play quickly and make decisions quickly. So I, I could believe that that could be impactful there. They're getting a 4-4. Four, four. That sucks. But I got a 3-4. That's not as good. My journey has made you worried for me? What do you mean? How do they play? Probably slower. Presumably. Yeah, and I, I think I should probably should be. So maybe more deliberate play is the answer. 
like that's one thing that I am doing in the sweatsuit tournaments that I'm not doing here is like I'll he means thinking more, Brian. Because I'll take definitely take my time there. Because I in best of three, I could kind of just chit chat with you guys while I'm playing. But I mean, the answer may be an attitudinal shift too. And that I just need to think more. Not a lot to think about here. I think we'd be pretty happy attacking with at least one of these. I'm a little concerned about um, Arcane Subtraction. But if I can clear out their 4-4, four -four, both of their 4-4s, four we're incredibly happy about that. Yeah, there's Arcane Subtraction, but that's okay. We're one good draw away from something nice happening here. I don't think I want to scry upkeep because we may be just sending this guy in. That anatomy is going to hurt us here. Oof. We need quite the spell here. Campus Guide is not quite the spell. I can't afford a bum top deck. So the question is, do we attack this guy in and draw and just pray to the draft gods that it works? Or do we scry first and see if we can actually hit something that matters? What's up, Dorkman? The drafts are going terrible. How was your day? I think we're going to need to attack in and draw if we have any chance of winning this. Seven, eight, nine. We're almost bloody dead. That means I kind of have to play this here, right? For a 5-5, five, five, which I don't think is going to win it. But it's about as close as I can get. Oh, shoot, I'm just dead. Never mind. Well... Not quite dead, but we're going to one. All right. I'm not going to win by blocking. I also don't think I'm going to win. We're just dead. That one's over. I don't understand this thing with NFTs. Maybe I don't get it. Can somebody explain to me NFTs in a way that I can understand? It's a digital piece of art that you own.
I don't I don't understand that. It's like you owned a Bitcoin, but it was a JPEG. But doesn't that mean I could just take a picture of your your art asset and then I guess that would be counterfeit, but I still have the picture. I don't I don't really understand. deck is pretty happy to have access to environmental sciences. What does non-fungible mean? Maybe that's the part I don't understand appropriately. Can't, unable to be funged, can't be replicated. I, maybe that's the thing. I, whatever the collector gene is, I've just never had it. I've never cared about particularly collecting things. I'm trying to decide if I want to trade this off, and I think I do. It's like I can just sciences, divide it, make a fractal, move along with my life. Yeah, but I'd still have the picture of it. You're right, I can go take a picture of the Mona Lisa and then look at it whenever I want, but I don't actually own the Mona Lisa. And I, I, I hear and understand you. I'm just saying... It seems a little silly to do that for a tweet. But maybe it ain't. Piggy Storm! Well, maybe I just need to make some non-fungible tokens of me losing drafts and then we'll be millionaires. I'll take a break. Don't need to get mana tithed. There's a um, collectible card game, I think it's the one Chris Clay went to work on, that basically is doing that. That too is the part I don't understand. Like, it seems like we're burning up the planet, but... Let's kill him. It's not quite dead. That might be more fun next turn. 
Heck yeah, punk. Thank you for saying so. I am pretty happy with this. That's fine. I'm gonna have to block next turn and I'll just have more crap to attack him with. Don't wrath me. And their board's gone, except for that one. Well, thank you, Cyril. I mean, getting mad when you're losing doesn't help you start winning, right? It just makes you mad and losing. You want to be a... Uh, you could be a loser or a mad loser. I'd rather just be a loser. And maybe if I'm not mad, I can figure out how to be a winner. Like, we tried something very different this draft, and, I mean, so far, it's worked better than what I was doing. It could be pretty good with some uh, red. May have to discard the Masterpiece, which I don't love. But that's a thing we could do. It's probably a thing we're doing. Well, tilting just doesn't help. <laughs> hey, Anonymous Gifter, thank you for the gift sub. Welcome to the Fat Cat Club, punk. We're glad to have you. Y'all spam some cats for Anonymous. I wonder if I'm supposed to enthusiastic study their dude to get red. That seems incredibly stupid, and I don't want to do that. But I may have to, like, obviously after they attack. Because I can already just play the 3-4 next turn, which is okay. It would hurt if they have a, a counter smell. You can have that, though. With any luck, we can use this to, like... Hit some freaking land drops. I still wouldn't mind a red source off the top. I'd also would have liked for that not to have died. That would have been really swell. What's it like to have that many colors of mana? Because the other option is five color nonsense. I haven't tried that, and that looks like what this opponent is on. Good reef.
I don't see why they wouldn't, Pong. Lightning ball is pretty good. So I guess the theory could be that I'm just not paying enough attention while playing. I'm used to face rolling. That's reasonable, too. I wonder, like, do the people who are good at best at one interact with their chat at all? Or are they just sitting... Is this the stream? I don't, I don't, I could do that. Yeah, we were kind of doing okay with best of one cow time. Uh, this one's been really difficult for me, though. Nice, Linda. That's great. That was fun. That was a good experience. So we tried something new. We got our butts handed to us. Okay. We will continue to iterate until we have it. And so a lot of people have come in and said best of three is, is soft, best of three is easy, etc., etc. That's not my goal to get good at best of three. Getting good at best of three doesn't help me with my goal, right? My goal is to be good at best of one, which means we need to do some adjustments. I'd been thinking it was in the drafting. It may not have been. It may have been that I'm just playing too quickly and that we need to slow down and tank a little more and really like not play by heuristic, but rather like read the cards, think about the lines. And that's what I could use to give voice to what I'm doing is I'm pretty good about talking while I'm thinking. So I could try that aspect. Anyway, y'all say goodbye to YouTube. Uh, maybe by tomorrow's YouTube video, we will have figured this out.